Okay, in this last video, we're going to be looking at immigration and the goals. So how can immigration be used to achieve each of the domestic macroeconomic goals? So basically, at a basic level, immigration um, helps to boost both the quality and the quantity of our productive resources. So quality because we get access to new skills, quantity because we get access to new people, so more labour and more skilled labour. And that all helps to boost our aggregate supply, our overall supply potential. It can help to alleviate skill shortages and overall expands our productive capacity because basically we can produce more. More people here, our maximum possible output is increased. So immigration is critical to helping keep our labour force participation rates high in face of our ageing population. So overall, for aggregate supply, it increases the supply of labour, which puts downward pressure on wages and also boosts output. It helps to reduce skill shortages or capacity constraints, boost labour productivity because we get access to new skills, um, and helps to achieve economies of scale because we have a larger market as a whole um, because there's more demand. It also increases our interconnectedness to overseas market, which can help export demand as well. So if these people can bring ideas that help us to penetrate world markets, then that can have a benefit for supply, um, overall growth as well. So in terms of our first goal, which is strong and sustainable economic growth, you can make links to both demand and supply. It's mainly a supply side policy, but there are also benefits for demand. So immigration, first of all, leads to increased consumption spending because um, we have a larger population. There's more people here, there's going to be overall more consumption. Investment demand may also increase because when people migrate here, our overall number of entrepreneurs increases, so more people are establishing businesses. So consumption increase, investment increases, there's more foreign investment, um, so that increases as well. The government also collects more tax, so they can spend more on G1 and G2. They have to as well because we need more infrastructure and schools and stuff, but basically generally G1 and G2 increase because they collect more tax to use for that. Um, and can also help to boost our export demand, often because um, migrants buy things from their old country as well. So consumption increases because you've got more people, investment because more entrepreneurs, more businesses open up, and G1 and G2 because we collect more tax. From a supply perspective, immigration helps to expand our supply potential or our overall ability to produce. So given that most of them are skilled, immigration increases participation rates. As I said, most of them are young and skilled, um, which helps to reduce skill shortages and allows us to meet demand without inflationary pressure. So our overall supply potential is improved, so we can meet that demand without causing inflation. It helps to increase participation rates. Um, so migrants have a 95% pop, um, participation rate amongst skilled migrants. It also boosts productivity levels because they bring skills and places downward pressure on wages. So they're all linked you can make to the supply. There's an increased, um, so, so there is um, increased participation rates, there's lot higher productivity, lower wages, increased willingness to supply, which overall boosts our overall productive capacity. And they also bring skills and knowledge and ideas, new ideas and innovations, which help to boost productivity as well. So that all gives Australia a competitive advantage, and you can link that to our international competitiveness. Um, particularly the business innovation investment programs give us a better access to international markets as well so we can penetrate those world markets not only because we have lower prices but we have more knowledge about what sort of products they want. In terms of price stability, immigration can lead to more inflation in the short term if it leads to more demand, particularly if they're not skilled migrants, but generally this is outweighed by the supply side benefits. So essentially immigration helps to reduce capacity constraints or skill shortages which helps to keep wages down and the increased competition for job also helps to boost productivity. So the fact there's more competition for job boosts productivity, there's also we get access to new ideas, new techniques to produce, which helps the lower cost of production as well. So the skills they bring to the economy also helps to keep um, cost of production down. So increased productivity because of more competition, increased productivity because of better skills, and lower prices because of lower wages as well. Um, immigration can lead to higher house prices, however, because there's more people demanding houses potentially. So it's important to note that if migrants are not working, um, then it can lead to increased demand and more inflationary pressures. But given most of our migration is skilled, um, that should help with the three benefits. So one, boost participation, increases competition for jobs, increase productivity, lower wages, they give us access to new skills and new ideas which boost productivity as well. In terms of unemployment, um, good immigration policies generally will reduce unemployment rates. So firstly, they can lead to more aggregate demand, which increases the derived demand for labour. In some instances, if migrants are taking Australian jobs, then that can lead to increased structural unemployment. Um, it can also reduce the incentive to train local workers. So it can have a negative impact on unemployment if they're taking Australian jobs or if um, there's a lack of incentive to train Australians. 
but most immigration is focused on professionals and um, where, where, where there are legitimate skill shortages. So the migrants help them. Um, basically, it's not an issue, even though it still might have issues for training Australians, they shouldn't be taking Australian jobs if we're doing it properly. Um, we won't immigrate in areas where Australia has high unemployment, um, so it shouldn't lead to big problems. Or even if there are skill shortages, as I said to you, it may reduce the incentive for employers to train Australian workers, so that can have a negative impact. It can lead to more structural unemployment. So to summarise, the benefits are more demand, which creates jobs. The other benefits is that it helps to reduce wages and reduce costs of production, which makes us more internationally competitive, which creates more jobs, and firms become more willing to supply. So they're the benefits. That increased demand, increased willingness to supply because of lower wages, increased international competitiveness. Your weaknesses are that, one, if they're in areas where we don't have legitimate skill shortages, Australians might be locked out, which causes more structural unemployment. And secondly, if there's a lack of incentive to train Australians, um, in the long term, that can also lead to more unemployment. So it's important to have both your pros and cons there. Non-material living standards, your positives, um, adds to multiculturalism in Australia, so they bring new cultures, new foods. Um, it boosts our defence capabilities. Um, we have better connections to the world. In terms of negatives, the main negative is it can be unsustainable. So basically, there's more people here. It can be bad for the environment. It can lead to um, problems for our infrastructure, for our dependence on water, roads. Um, buses and trains often find it hard to sustain the population increases. It can also lead to more negative externalities because there's more people here, so we need to produce more, which can lead to more greenhouse gas emissions. Um, it can lead to more congestion on roads. Um, it can help. It can also means that we need more infrastructure as well. So it can have negative implications for the environment and for um, being really crowded. In terms of material living standards, it adds to the pool of labour, which helps to fix our ageing population. Um, they give us access to new ideas, which helps to lower costs of production, gives us better access to trading relationships, which then can create jobs as well. Um, and it can boost taxation revenue, so we can have more money to provide essential services as well. Um, in terms of negatives, it can contribute to household affordability. So if there's more people here, we have to demand, particularly that's been the case with a lot of Chinese investors in recent times, which increases the demand for property and can lock people out of the housing market. Um, and it can, in some cases, lead to declining work conditions. So with the instance of 457 visas, um, it can lead to lower pay rates as well. In terms of living standards, this is just a summary. So basically the benefits is that um, it helps to alleviate our ageing population. It can lower the unemployment rate if we choose appropriately. It gives us a great access to overseas markets, lowers prices, more cultural diversity and a greater tax base. Your weaknesses are that it can deplete natural resources, can increase greenhouse gas emissions, it can lead to more congestion on roads and railways, and it can increase house prices and rent. And there can also be some social tensions that you may say, see in some instances as well. So in summary, for strong and sustainable growth, you want to be linking it to things like increased participation, reduced skill shortages, increased productivity, and this idea of all the new ideas and new skills they bring to the economy. For inflation, it can lead to more in the short term if there's more demand, but it should lead to reduced capacity constraints, lower wages and increased productivity um, because we get access to these new techniques. For full employment, it's good because it boosts demand, can lead to more structural unemployment if it's areas where we don't have skill shortages, can lead to less incentive to train workers, but overall it should reduce costs of production, lower prices and boost demand for workers. And living standards we've talked about in detail. So to sum up, Explain how immigration might increase Australia's productive capacity and help us to achieve strong and sustainable growth. Make sure you answer all parts of this question if you get it, um, talking about our productive capacity and economic growth. So um, it's basically you need to clearly identify that it increases our overall output potential because we have a greater quality and quantity of resources, but it also helps to lower prices, boost international competitiveness. Talk about the rest of this in class. Thank you.